Welcome to EdgeCast, the series where we show you tips, tricks, and best practices when using Solid Edge. In today's episode, I'll be showing the basics of using Design Manager to maintain and repair file links in Solid Edge when managing your assembly data. I'll start by explaining exactly what file links are and why they're important. Then I'll show you how to use some of the simplest Design Manager workflows, introduce you to Pack and Go, and finally show you the three methods used to repair broken file links in your designs. This won't be a comprehensive guide to Design Manager, but it will be extremely useful for users who've never seen it before. As you're probably aware, Solid Edge creates and edits CAD files. Design Manager, however, is a built-in Solid Edge utility that edits the links between CAD files. Now you may be wondering, what links? And if that's the case, I'll explain. Whenever you create an assembly file with part files, or a draft file with either parts or assemblies, this creates a file link. The assembly will look at the last file location it found its components, and the same for draft. If they find them, that's great, the assemblies and drafts work as expected, but if the files have been moved carelessly from their last location, the links are broken, and assemblies and draft files will lose their definition. If you've seen the dreaded missing files message when using any CAD package, you know what I mean. Ideally, your CAD models would never have to move, but this is the real world, and data's moved around all the time. To avoid the headaches of redefining your missing files, Design Manager can be used to move assembly components while rebuilding the links to their new file locations. Design Manager is installed with Solid Edge, and can be opened either from the Data Management tab in Solid Edge, or from the Windows Start menu, shown here. A third method of opening Design Manager is to right-click a Solid Edge document and choose Open with Design Manager. Design Manager has a number of commands which allow users to copy and rename files, replace and revise assembly components, find any drafts and assemblies related to currently open documents, change and update file links, and change any available document properties. The interface for Design Manager is fairly similar to normal Solid Edge, but contains only commands for selecting and managing data. You don't work in 3D here. You can open files in Solid Edge or view in Markup, select particular linked documents with the Select tools, move, rename, and set statuses on the selected files, or with the Action commands listed here. If you're brand new to using Design Manager, then instead of setting these actions manually, you might want to simply say, I need to move a file to a new location with a simple workflow. There's a convenient tool for this, which walks users through specific commands, such as replacing, copying, or revising files. A set of actions will be set up after doing so, and the user only needs to click Perform Actions. So let's show you how to do that. To use the Assistant, first start it from the command bar. Under the Tools tab, then select an action, and click Next, and answer the questions the assistant asks you. In my example, I want to move my open assembly to a new file location, so I'll start the Design Manager Assistant, and select Move a File as an action. Now I need to answer some questions. The file name is correct, but do I want to move the assembly and its components, or just the top-level assembly file? I think Assembly and Components should do fine. Next, where do I want to move them to? In this case, I have a folder already created for my Valve Assembly. I'll just copy the address in, rather than browse for it, then finish the workflow. Now this doesn't move the files yet. I have the chance to check exactly what actions are assigned, and what's going to happen to all of my files. In this updated table, we can see the new locations of all these files and a filled-in action column here, which shows exactly what's going to happen to them when I perform these actions. I'm happy with the new file locations, and I don't want to do anything else right now, so I'll hit Perform Actions. The new file location is going to open. Off-screen, let me drag it in. And here are all the components in their new home. The important thing about using this method is that if I open up the top-level assembly, the components are still always present. If I moved files to new locations with cut and paste, the assembly might break. 
If you're feeling confident after this, you can simply follow the three steps for any design manager action. Select, set actions, perform. First, select the files you want to move, revise, replace, or do whatever you want to. This can be done either with control clicking on the file names or by using the select tools available. For example, any files containing the text bolt can be chosen with select files. Next, set the actions against the selected files. This can be done with the commands in the ribbon bar or by right clicking and choosing an action from the drop down menu that appears. Revise, in case you aren't familiar with data management terminology, creates a new copy of the selected file with a slightly altered file name. The other actions should be fairly self explanatory. Finally, review the actions, new locations, and new file names, if applicable and anything you don't want to take place can be cleared with the Clear Action button. After clicking Perform Actions, each file's actions will be carried out, refreshing the Design Manager view. At this point you may also wish to return to Solid Edge with the button on the top left of the command bar. Let's go back to the valve assembly that's been moved to the new folder. First of all, I'm going to assign an action to this valve body. After selecting the file name, many of the actions will become available, and I'm going to revise this body. In other words, create a new file copy with a slightly different name. With my current options in Solid Edge, that'll mean adding a underscore and a one to the end of the file name. And I think I'll also move these two flanges to a new location. As both are going to the same place, I'll use the Edit Path command to send them there. Here's a convenient folder I created earlier called Flanges. You may have noticed I have subassemblies present in this valve assembly, so let's see all the subcomponents by expanding all. My next action will be to select all the fasteners here, which I know from my company naming conventions will contain either the word nut or screw. With search wildcards on either side, I'll enter nut and hit select, and anything that contains the word nut is highlighted. If I repeat the same thing for screw, then both nuts and screws are highlighted. Now if I choose an action, it'll affect all three highlighted items. Let's set the action to rename, which makes the new file name fields editable, and replace all instances of the word nut with the word fastener. You can see here the new file name has updated, and if you need to change your part naming conventions, Design Manager can be extremely useful with this command. I could revise all the documents which link to these files as well, such as drafts or assemblies, by choosing where used and assigning more actions, but I won't. Instead, I'll review the queued actions as they stand. This rename action is redundant now, so I'll clear it by selecting the file and clicking on Clear Action. As there were two instances of this Allen screw, this action down here was cleared as well. The actions currently listed are all I want to do for now, so I'll ask Design Manager to perform them. If you remember, Body01 was highlighted in red because it's being revised but not moved, so a warning appears against it. Now the question is, do I mind that there will be two copies of my valve body in one folder? In this case, not really, so I'll proceed as usual. If I expand the assembly again, I can see that the flange locations have changed, my M15 nut has renamed itself to Fastener, and Body01 has been revised to Body01 Revision 1. In large assemblies, Design Manager can save quite a lot of time for anyone trying to manage their assembly data, and then it'll allow you to move straight back to Solid Edge and continue modelling. One of the most common actions that users take is to move or copy all the parts for an assembly into a single folder to send to other users, and as a result this has a dedicated command called pack and go. This can be accessed with or without Design Manager, and moves all linked documents from an assembly or draft file into one folder, which may also be a zipped archive. If needed, drawings and simulation results can be included, and the end result is an independent copy of the assembly or draft file, with no broken links. Here's an example assembly I want to send to another user, maybe someone who can't connect to my server, or maybe a third party. The problem is that the components are scattered through my folder structure, 
and the user needs all of them to view the assembly properly. I need to use pack and go. This could be done with the application button share pack and go combination, but I want to show the second way of accessing the command. Design Manager shows the overall size of the assembly and files to be sent when you hit pack and go, which is useful if you need to fit this assembly onto a USB stick or external hard drive. Once it's finished processing the components, you'll see this dialog box. Now this shows all the files to be copied to the new folder, plus how they will be copied. In this case, any drawings of the assembly and components will be included, and the folder levels will be maintained. In other words, if you have a folder called Fasteners, containing all of your nuts and bolts in the assembly, the copied folder will have a subfolder that's also called Fasteners. Bomb view is an option that allows you to view the assembly below in an actual assembly structure, instead of a flat list of files, which is the default. Finally, we have two output options. Either we can send all these files to a single folder, or to a zipped archive for easier file transfer. Now where do we want to save them? OneDrive will do. New folder. Control N is a wonderful keyboard shortcut, by the way. Then choose the folder and save. I have some duplicate file names for certain components, but Solid Edge will add increments to their names so that everything has a unique file name. Just so you know, having multiple files with the same name isn't very good practice. Avoid creating them if possible. Now we wait for the assembly to compress. And there we go, 627 unique components. This process also opened an explorer window on my other screen. I could very easily right click and share this assembly with someone else using OneDrive. And that's my assembly, successfully copied into one folder. Now this is all great if you want to prevent your assembly and draft links from breaking, but what happens if the worst should occur, and your links are broken by some other user, other than manually replacing all your assembly components, which is painful? You can use three other methods of repairing your files. Here they are, in order of ease of use. Broken links is by far the easiest method of repairing a file with missing links. Open Design Manager and choose the Tools tab, select Broken Links, and add the location where you know the missing files have been moved to. You can add multiple folder locations, as long as your workstation can view them. If needs be, you can add an entire server drive, and wait for Design Manager to automatically search for your missing parts. As the command's fairly simple, I won't show it as a demo, but what I will show is a method of repairing broken assembly links while the assembly is opening, so you don't have to do anything. This is known as link management, which takes a bit of setup, but it's incredibly powerful when used correctly. It involves editing a file called linkmgmt.txt, adding a location where you know your missing files can be found, and then ensuring that Solid Edge is reading this link management line when opening files. When any documents with missing links are opened, the links will attempt to repair themselves if the files are found anywhere in the search path folders. If duplicate file names are found, though, the search might repair the link to the wrong file because of the way that Windows searching is designed. To show this in action, I need an assembly with broken links. Here's one I broke earlier, the angle grinder from the training folder. This warning message should be familiar. The grinder's head has been moved somewhere else. I could search for it with these buttons on the side, but what if we had to do this with 20 missing components, or 50, or 100? As it happens, I know where the head has been moved to. It's a folder in my documents. So let's say that there's more than one assembly that's been broken as a result of this. So what do we need to do to resolve all of this automatically? We need to edit linkmanagement.txt, which can be found in Solid Edge's install directory by default, although it can also be placed in a shared location if multiple users need to access broken assemblies. Here's mine, which I'll open in Notepad. I'll leave the first three lines alone, and instead add an entry in the search path section here. Let's remove the first bit of it though, and make my search much wider to encompass the whole of documents. I know of more than one user who has their entire CAD vault written in here, but the more you put in here, the longer it might take to open files. I'll save it now, then reopen my grinder. 
As expected, it takes a little bit longer to open the angle grinder, as the search is still running, but, as if by magic, the heads now reappeared, and I didn't need to fix anything. If this doesn't work for you, it's probably because your link management file isn't being read by Solid Edge. To make sure it is, you'll need to go to Solid Edge Options, then File Locations, and check the Link Management entry. Here, you can see my copy of Edge is looking at the Preferences folder for Link Management. The final method of repairing links is designed to do so as the files are being moved, and is mostly used when moving your CAD files between servers or different drives. It's called Redefine Links, and can be found under the Tools tab in Design Manager. The main problem when moving or copying assemblies to a new server is that these assemblies and drafts will still be pointing to the old server for their parts, as we haven't edited their links. But redefining these links will create the links to the parts on the new server instead. There are two conditions that must first be met. The CAD vaults must have been copied, not moved, and the old and new data must be readable by the workstation that's redefining the links. The easiest way to explain how to redefine links is to actually demonstrate it. Here I have a large folder with quite a lot of CAD data. In this case, the training folder from Solid Edge works as a demo set and a new server location that I want to copy it all to, namely the temp drive on our server. So, firstly, I'll copy the CAD folder. I won't cut and paste, as that'll break all the links, and I'll have to use link management instead. If you're doing this in a production environment, I would advise trying this with a small folder first, just to make sure you're happy with the redefine links procedure. Now that all the files are copied, I'll start Design Manager with no files open. Now the Tools tab, and Redefine Links. Here I need to set my old link path, a higher level folder containing all the files that need to be linked, and the Redefined Link path, which should contain the same data but on a different drive or server location. I think I'll just go ahead and copy the two locations from Windows Explorer. There we go. This is my new location, and here's my old one. Both of these locations contain exactly identical folders called training, with the same data present. Now I just need to tell Solid Edge which links to rebuild. I don't have to process all of the files I just copied, but in this case I want to process everything, so I'll just choose training on the server. My process options are already set to relink all Solid Edge file types, so let's start redefining links to the new server part files. The more files that are being redefined, the longer this will take. But now that we're finished, I can safely open the server-based files without needing to link to my documents folder. To conclude then, I've shown the available tools that can be used to maintain and repair file links in Solid Edge. We've seen the basic design manager workflows and the actions that keep file links intact while files move. And finally, I've shown how to repair links that are already broken using three different methods. These tools should help you maintain assemblies and spend a lot less time hunting for your misplaced files. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, different areas of Solid Edge you'd like to see covered in future videos, or any other feedback, please either leave a comment below or send them to us by email at support at cuttingedge.co.uk. And be sure to tune in to watch the next episode of Edgecast, in which we'll be exploring how to use synchronous modelling in the sheet metal environment.